So what's up? This is Casey. Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime number 165. Wow. Yeah. That's lots of... Wow. <laughs> you say that every time now. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just some, such a big number. Yeah. Um, but I just want to welcome you guys to our live show where <clears throat> it's not like a regular tutorial Shot Science type video. This is our longer form thing that we do because we want to have time to talk to you guys and answer your questions and talk to you about a few things that we think are going to help you with your game. Um, if that's not for you, get out right now. Just yeah, go. Go away. We don't need to hear about it. <laughs> Just get out. Um, but if this is something that you guys want to check out, please stick around and send us your questions because we would love to, to talk to you guys about some stuff. Um, but uh, before we get into it, let me tell you how it kind of goes. We have a topic that we like to discuss at the top of the show that we think is going to help you guys become a better basketball player, maybe help you take your skills to the next level, cut out some, some of the kind of learning curve stuff that people might have to go through otherwise. And while we're doing that, you guys are sending us your uh, questions about anything basketball related. It can be on passing, shooting, dribbling, defense, talking to your coach, athleticism, how to train, whatever it may be, send it our way and uh, we'll do our best to try to answer as many of those as we can. Early birds get the worm in this situation. Yeah. So send them in early because that, by the end we have too many and it's, it's hard to get your an question answered. So mm -hmm. send them in. Um, looks like we got a lot of people showing up already. Yeah. Zorik is from Spain. Sam Hayes is from the UK. Justin says, hello from Sydney, Australia. Wow. Alamo Tungo says, hello from India. Um, Suko XD says, I'm from Texas. Mang. Um, cool. <laughs> awesome. Right. Stay tuned for our question of the day. Um, <laughs> Also, want to let you guys know that we have just launched a few days ago shotscience.com. Uh, it's a relaunch of our old website, but yeah. but it's this is a completely brand new website that we want you guys to go check out. It's just shotscience.com, and on there we have so many things going on that are super awesome. We have our all access training uh, content that you can go in there, and it's like in depth descriptions, tutorials, demonstrations of how to shoot a basketball and how to train your vertical jump. Right. Um, and every month we're going to be adding new content to that stuff. Right. So um, we're going to be adding ball handling, then we're going to be adding passing and defense. So every month there's going to be new stuff and we're going to update all the stuff that we have in there every month as well. So if you guys go check that out, shotscience.com and check out the all access membership. Right. Um, and that's something that we really want you guys to check out. Also, uh, you know, we're going to continue doing all of our stuff on YouTube where we do videos and everything. That is an extra thing for the people that are serious about becoming <laughs> elite basketball players. So serious go, about those who want to be serious. Yeah. yeah. And so go check that out. We, we're really proud of it. We put a lot of work into it, and we will continue to put a lot of work into it. Also, if you want to go check out the website, we have all of our Shot Science t-shirts oh, there. Yeah, can't see them. There's mine. So if you want to join Team Shot Science and kind of represent a little bit, Go check that out. You can buy t-shirts and we will send them to you directly from us. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll write you a little note even. Um, so just make sure you go there, get a shirt, and send us some pictures of you guys wearing the shirt or video yeah. um, on Instagram or wherever. And we, we want to feature you guys. So yeah. if you want to get if you want to show up on some of the shot science pages like from Facebook or Instagram or whatever, get a shirt, take a picture or do a video, and we would love to feature some of you guys. Right. And be a member of Team Shot Science. Yeah. Um, that makes us super proud. And when we see you on Instagram, you've tagged it, Team Shot Science, and you're wearing our shirt. All right. We are giving you a huge virtual high five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so go check out ShotScience.com. Other cool stuff that's there, we have the Jump Box, which is our new vertical jump training kit that we're going to do some videos on here really soon. But it's there. And if you guys want to be the early birds on that one, you can check that. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that we use in our vertical jump training program that is like the essential gear that you need. So there's like the vertical jump resistance cords, there's the resistance bands kit that we have in there, uh, a specialty jump rope that we had made. Um, what else do we Foam have? Foam roller. Foam roller. And a shirt. And there's a shirt in there too. Yeah. So if you want to get that all hooked up in, in one, there, there you go. Lots of other stuff there too. We're going to be adding stuff. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Kind of a very kind of a segment that you need to have instilled in your practice when you go practice. Yeah. The first pillar is this. It's a diligent, very uh, focused, dialed in, slowed down approach to your mechanics. Right. So if we're, let's, let's use shooting as an example because we're shot science. Um, sh and when you're shooting, 
A perfect example of this in the first pillar would be the form shooting drill. Exactly. Yeah. So every, you know, you're not doing any kind of dynamic movement. It's all kind of very controlled. You're working on your mechanics and you're slow down as slow as you possibly can getting each mechanic right and then progressing to a you know more kind of regular uh paced or uh you know kind of uh scaling it up as you go hang on a second let me jump in here okay this is just a thought that occurred to me because i experienced this this morning a little bit with some people that we were working with and that is uh sometimes when we shoot around we're mindless uh, and by that, I mean, we're not really focusing on what we're doing. We're focusing on making a basket, but the mechanics of all that, that make it efficient and allow you to be able to put that ball in the basket on a regular basis. That is the key to the whole thing. Yeah. It's diligence, like yeah, a diligent absolutely. approach. You, you can go in there and you can, you can shoot 500 shots, yeah. but did you think about it? Did you evaluate each one? Did the, the one that you shot before influence the way that you shoot the next one? Right. Because you want to make sure that each shot is better, more focused, more dialed in. Exactly. So that first pillar is about that. <clears throat> and let's, let's say if you're talking about uh, you know, dribbling or you're talking about a, a move or something like that where there is a dynamic approach to it or layups, then you part way back, you work on your footwork first. Work on that segment, get that footwork going, slow it way down, then start to add more speed, more quickness to that, then add in the layup. You're starting, you're starting to work on the mechanics of actually releasing the ball, but you work up to things. It's not about just going in there and just blasting it out. It's about getting each part of it very precise and accurate. Yeah, truly. Okay, so then, that's, it's not always fun to do that, that segment, but I mean, if you are keeping it varied and, and you're really working on things, that's gonna help you later on too, because it will help you become a better coach of yourself. You will be able to figure out problems that you're having with your, with your shooting or whatever and exactly. be able to fix it. You, let me throw something in. This is something else that, that kind of came out this morning with one of the students that I was talking about, uh, talking with. He's a high school student, a high school player. I think maybe a sophomore uh, at a local high school. Okay, time out one second. Hang Nathan, Nathan Lal is asking, do I just go to the website to get a shirt or what? Yeah, shotscience.com. That's, That's where you go. Okay, and, and the upshot of what we're talking about is how much are you working on your shot? And he says, well, I don't have much time to work on my shot. I said, how much time does your team spend on working on shooting when they're at practice? And he, you could just see him thinking about it for a moment. He says, we hardly ever shoot uh, at practice. I think that's probably something that happens to a lot of practices because coaches are so dialed into getting their offense in, getting their defense in, getting uh, press breaks and all that kind of stuff that sometimes shooting uh, kind of falls by the wayside. And so the thing that I think is really important is you've got to build that into your practice time because that's what this game, this game is all about. It's about scoring. It's, you know, there are other elements that are really important, but why would we keep score otherwise? Okay. And so people have to learn how to shoot and how to score. Yeah. I mean, my rent. Yeah. Okay. So we're spending some time on this first pillar, but that's okay. because it's super important. And really the key take home of all of this stuff yeah. is that your individual skill development is important. If you want to be able to execute skills at the next levels of basketball, right. Right. if you, if you don't care about that, then Hey, go, go do your shoot around trick shot, half court shots, whatever. Right. But this is about people that, that want to get better. Second pillar of practice is game speed, game intensity. Yeah. So you're taking all the stuff that you learned and worked on in the first pillar and you're getting it up to game speed and, and kind of the intensity you would see in a game. Exactly. So right. you're adding in the, the, the dynamic movement. Maybe you're adding in a defender. Maybe you're uh, setting up the actual game scenarios, but you're doing it at the speed and pace of a game. And, and you know, when it comes to shooting, maybe that's one of those situations where you're flipping the ball to yourself. Uh, you're catching and addressing the basket, then you're attacking the basket or you're shooting or uh, you have the defender there and you're trying to read what he's going to do or she's going to do. And, uh, you, you know, you're just really trying to face those game situations in a controlled environment. So, you know, you're getting the repetitions, but also feeling that pressure of the, all those different things. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, so much of our time when we are learning how to do different things, we just play at a practice speed. And then all of a sudden we're cast into a game to play and the game is way ahead of us speed wise. And so by uh, practicing that beforehand, you find out that, okay, I've got to make this adjustment because of the speed of the game, or I've got to make that adjustment because of the speed of the game. And so it's always important to uh, have a segment of time where you just, you're going to game speed. And we have a video on this that talks yeah. about that. And, 
you know, so many times people ask, I'm so money in practice and I, I can't miss or I'm so good. And then I get into a game and things just fall apart and yeah. I'm garbage. And well, that is the reason why, because yeah. you haven't done game speed, game intensity practice. Yeah, absolutely. That is, I mean, it's almost invariably the reason. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it is. So when you, you're feeling like you're just killing it in practice and then you're, you know, eating it in, in games, <laughs> yeah, right. then, you know, that's the situation. Okay. So that's, that's pillar two, game speed, game intensity. All pillar right. three is game experience. So this is, it's not technically practice, but it is in the big scheme of things. And game experience is just getting out there and playing pickup games, playing school team games, playing traveling team games, playing whatever you can get, uh, you know, just actual game experience. Right where you're facing the pressures of competition, you're, you're running that full court of the basketball court, um, you're, you're getting fatigued and you're playing and still executing using all the stuff that you worked on in the first two pillars. Right, and, and you're learning the nuances of the game. I mean, uh, most people that have played some basketball have some sense of how the game needs to be played, but once you get into a situation where you have developed your skills to a certain level, that allows you more, uh, um, your game, a wider play, and, and which is really good. We always want to take and grow our game, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. And so by getting into these little games with a little two-on-two, three-on-threes, or five-on-five full court, all of that really helps you to develop your game so that uh, when you play in a regular game, uh, you're going to be more effective. You get the job done. And a lot of times people spend their time working on the two pillars of practice, which are kind of shooting around, casual, uh, not really working on things, and then they get into playing a lot of game experience yeah, stuff. Yeah. That is not a good approach because you're not really working on your skill development. You're working on uh, basically kind of... Just uh, shooting around. Yeah, f- filler time and then playing in these games that you... I mean, they really don't help you in the long run because you haven't worked on your skill development. Yeah. Um, so the three pillars of practice review are number one is the very dialed in, focused, diligent practice. On mechanics. On mechanics. And that means parring everything way back and just working on each individual aspect of it. Number two is uh, game speed, game intensity practice. And that's taking all this stuff from the first pillar and amping it up to actual dynamic game pace. Right. And the third pillar is game experience. And that's using all the things from the first two pillars facing the pressures of competition right. and fatigue. Right. Um, and so, I mean, that's really the most important uh, way to approach practice that you can possibly find. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is that is really the way that all the top level pro guys practice themselves. Yeah. Um, they are, you know, really diligent about each and every aspect of those. So we we should tell you we sh- we want to you know reinforce with you guys that that's what you should do as well right. if you're serious about becoming a next level basketball right. player. Also, in, we could add in a shadowy fourth pillar, uh, which is like the conditioning and, oh, yeah. and working on your athleticism and stuff yeah. too. But I mean, that's uh, outside of the, the kind of your skill development. So um, really work on the three pillars of practice, right? Exactly right. Andrew Young needs to catch up with us. He hasn't put in number three yet. We're waiting for that. Andrew Young, what, what are you talking he about? He just here? went past it. He's got it right here. Andrew Young. Yeah. Uh, one is mechanics. Two is game speed, game intensity. Come on, get that third one in there now, Andrew. And uh, Sean Killian was asking here, too. I did really good in practice, but not the best in the game. What do you think happened? We just talked about that. I mean, yeah. that's really the second pillar of practice is that, yeah. you know, you haven't uh, kind of put in the pressures of working at game speed. So when you get into an actual game, it's like, what is this? I haven't been here before. The game kind of gets away from you because you're not used to the speed and not used to the um, intensity level. Yeah. That's usually the problem. Okay. So that's what all, that's all on uh, our secrets to perfect practice. And right. that, you know, maybe you guys see that and you're like, well, I knew that. It's one thing to know it and one thing to do it. So okay. make sure that you guys are out there. Uh, okay. Andrew Young, we'll hit you with number three before we get out of here. Okay. Number three is game experience. Actually playing in games. Yeah. Yeah, the talking and that's even pickup help games. It doesn't have to be organized uh, uh, high school or junior high school games. It can be any it, pickup game. It can be anything. Pickup games, school team games, traveling team, uh, you know, <laughs> pro games, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, all of that stuff counts, um, but in the grand scheme of things. Right. Okay, so uh, that's it for that. Now we're going to move into talking to you guys about answering some of your questions. Yeah. But before we do that, we have one question for you as well. Um, and so please, everybody here answer this. 
we want to know this. Where are you from in the world? Yeah. Okay. We want to know where you guys are from, where you're sitting there watching this, uh, because we're here in Santa Cruz, California, which is, you know, on the coast of California. Yeah. And uh, we want to know if you're in Japan or if you're in, uh, you know, Austria or wherever. Just tell us where you guys are from. And uh, that really is exciting for us to see. And we'll shout a few people out if, if we can. We actually had about eight or ten people opened with where they were from today. That yeah. was, that was kind of cool. And we would also love it if you guys would get Shot Science shirts and then walk around yeah. town telling people that your team Shot Science yeah, because absolutely. that would be super cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like just like Car World Insta is from Russia. If you got a shirt and you're walking around in Russia with our oh. shirt, we would freak out. Oh, we would. And yeah. you, we, you'd be all over our channel. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let me shout out a few people because they're already coming in here. Uh, the Talking Mist is from Moscow, Russia. Jordan is from Houston. Christian Cruz is from Ohio. Uh, Romar Rivera is from Puerto Rico. Andrew Young is from Nashville, Tennessee. Juan Perez is from South Texas. Um, School Bus Q is from Aruba in the Caribbean. Uh, Vigash is from Kunjamani, Sri Lanka. Right. That's cool. Uh, Fundy AF is from Detroit, Michigan. And William M. says, hi, from France. All right. Awesome. So we'll hit more of you guys, too, as, as you roll in. Let us know where you guys are from. All right. Okay. Um, and if people are just getting here, check out ShotScience.com. Absolutely. And we talked about why just a little while ago. <laughs> um, okay. Let's start answering some of these questions here and keep sending them in, too. Um, Chris Morrison is saying, how do I keep my shooting arm straight? You know, <laughs> you mentally have to just focus on that. That's true with any of uh, your mechanics on your shot. Might I suggest pillar number one? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is that you mentally focus on the fact that I need to get my arm straight and hold that position for a moment or two at the end of the shot. I mean, that you condition yourself just mentally getting into it. And, you know, uh, that's not just with getting the arm straight. It has to do with a follow-through. It has with keeping the elbow in, getting your legs into it, and so on and so forth. You mentally have to uh, get that in your mind and make sure that you're focusing on that. Yeah, I mean, so many people ask us questions about, uh, you know, how do I do this because I do this? Yeah. And it's like you've identified the problem or the yeah. issue. So what you need to do is take that, go to the first pillar of practice, and just work on getting, you know, working that out of your of your uh, mechanics. Well, that and the fact you can go to our YouTube channels on uh, shooting and what, uh, and there are answers to a lot of those questions there that if you just go look them up. Okay, this one is from Alex X Ziam Productions who says, "What do I do with my opposite hand?" Uh, we're well, probably talking about your assist hand, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, let me take a moment on this because this was a discussion we had this morning. I had a new student come in. And um, before we started talking very much, uh, I said, what do you think your problems are? He says, well, I think the thumb on this other hand is creating a problem for my shot. Uh, and I said, are you friends with this person and that person? He said, yes. Are they ones who told you about that thumb? Yes. Okay. And so we looked at it and absolutely that thumb was sweeping through the ball. It's the off hand. And this is very common. And now some people call that the guide hand. We don't call it the guide hand because it does not guide the basketball. We Typically, don't want it to. No, and you don't want it to. Typically what happens as you get ready to uh, stroke it, this other thumb comes through on the basketball and gives it side spin, and it will take and push it to the right, and it'll push it to the left. And so what you want to do, and if you watch the really good shooters, as they're getting ready to shoot, that hand drops away, and they go ahead and finish the shot. Um, and so... The, what you have to do is that you have to make this a mental practice as well. I got to get that hand off there. And that was the experience for this young guy this morning. I said, okay, I don't want, you're not going to shoot any shots now for the next five minutes, except with just one hand. And that's your shooting hand. The other hand, you can stick it in your pocket. You can go behind your neck. I don't care what you do, but it doesn't touch the basketball. In sight of two or three minutes, the ball is going straight as an arrow and he's dropping shots. Okay. And so um, we want to get that, that particular element of the shot. And now, the term guide hand, okay, well, I've heard that since I was a kid myself and never really understood it because I didn't figure, well, how can it guide the basketball? You know, this hand over here is the one that's going to do all the work and it should guide the basketball. Well, well, and here's the thing too is that consider other sports that we use to uh, deliver the ball. Are yeah. we throwing a football with two hands? Are we throwing a baseball with two hands? Yeah. I mean, when we're trying to release with accuracy and precision and trying to get that right uh, rotation and backspin on the ball, yeah. we don't want that other hand influencing it. Yeah. 
I mean, that's just another variable where things can go wrong. Yeah. So when, when your hand is on the ball and it's the assist hand, we want the shooting arm to be the one influencing it. If this one is influ influencing it all, it's going to add another variable, which could be that side spin or it might shift your, your, your aim a little bit. It does. We it, don't want it, it to does do that. that. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think probably for those of you who may be experiencing that problem, one of the things I would encourage you to do is shoot the ball from about eight feet. 10 feet, something like that, and just take one hand and, and get the other one off of it completely. And you'd be surprised how straight the ball goes when you're shooting with just one hand. Now, the other little caveat to all of that, too, is this, is that sometimes when we release the basketball, our wrist turns to the outside. That's going to take the ball to that side of the basket, typically. Uh, typically. And, and sometimes we'll finish with the last three fingers like this, and it will take in the other direction. What we want really is what is called flexion, where your fingers are going right straight to the middle of the hoop every time. Okay, and so uh, that that's an important uh, element okay. to square away. So two things on that too as well. Number one is that if you want to see demonstrations of the assist hand and the release, you can go to our YouTube channel and see our old videos on that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want to see an even more in-depth Dis description of it, demonstration of it, and, and dr drills to work on, go to shotscience.com and we have our all access shooting membership there. Right. And we break it down fully into how that stuff works, how it should look, and how you should practice it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing too is that if you do that and then you also take something like this phone, I'm sure many of you guys have a, a, an iPhone or the similar, mm -hmm. you can put it on the slow motion function and record yourself and you can see what you're doing with your hands there and we would suggest you do that yep. um, too many people try to, to analyze without actually filming themselves and it's it's really hard but if you can stop you, you basically can slow it down so that you can see all the little elements of what you're doing and that so, helps you to kind of figure out uh, maybe what your shooting problem is you know um, and so that's a great idea, Casey. I really think that's great. Zeno says, "Hey, greetings from Amsterdam. All awesome. Right. All a right, lot of cool. lot of people from uh, not so close to us today." Yeah, that's true. Um, Den V Star, who's here almost every week, is is saying, "Hey, from Moscow once again. Right. You must be the guy out there that's running around Moscow telling everybody to, to, to join <laughs> Team Shot Science because we got a lot of people from Moscow today. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see. Zorik says, "Should I go to the gym before practice?" If you can get in there and spend some time that's meaningful time, I would do it. I think he's referring to working out with weights and stuff. Oh, no, I, I don't agree with that. But I, I think if you're going to go in there and, and, and work on, on shooting skills or footwork skills, something like that, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, two things here. Yeah. Number one, yes, if you're referring to going to the gym for practice early, yes, because that shows the coach that you really are uh, serious about what you're doing, serious about getting better, serious about being a part of the team. It also gives you time to work on things, so do that. Yeah. If you're talking about lifting weights and doing that, don't do that before practice. No. Bad idea, um, because you're going. If you're if you're working mm -hmm. out correctly with resistance and weights and things like that, then you will fatigue your muscles to the point where going to practice should give you negative returns, and you you will not be able to perform at the level that you need to. I see the follow up there. Where should I go to the gym for lifting weights? As in lifting weights, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we didn't get there yet. So, no, but I know, but that, now um, I see what he's getting at. Yeah, so, so if you're going to do weight training during the season, you should do it after practice it or be. on days off, yeah. and you should not do it within two days of playing a game. Yeah. Uh, it really is not smart to do that. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the things you have to deal with when you are playing in season is that you won't be able to train like you would if you were in the off season. Uh, but don't practice before the going or don't go to the gym before practice. Now, I mean, if you're doing some kind of arm exercise or leg exercise and then you should try to shoot, I mean, that's, it's, it's not going to give you the, the kind of, uh, the, you know, what you need to be doing there. Won't be there. Um, okay. Let's see here. How about Scoob in New Mexico? That's Brandon Suber. He says oh, Soob. Soob in New Mexico. All right. Hello, Soob. Is that what people say when you're on the court? Soob. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. This one is from Suko XT, who says, best things to practice by yourself. Everything. 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 You don't need a, a person in basketball to help you very much unless you're maybe working on passing, but you can find a wall that you can pass to and it'll rebound it back to you. Uh, and the thing is, is that if you, a lot of people spend a lot of, light, a lot of their time sh uh, shooting practice, in shooting practice, and not much else. 
And so what happens, they get into the game, they can't pass the basketball, um, they can't attack the basket. So what you want to do is give yourself a well-rounded approach on the things that you do want to practice that have uh, a positive effect on you as a player on the floor. Yeah, so again, it kind of goes back to the three pillars of practice. Again, you need to work diligently and very uh, kind of granularly on yourself right. and progress each skill by yourself. And you should be able to work on absolutely everything in basketball by yourself, sure. whether it's defense, whether it's uh, passing or ball handling or shooting. Sure. All of that you can work on yourself. And part of it, too, is you need to be able to visualize uh, the game and defense. And when you get to the second pillar of practice and you're doing the game speed, game intensity, you don't need to have somebody there to work with you. Yeah. You can do all that by yourself. And, you know, it's great to have somebody there and you should try to do that, but it is okay to visualize, okay, you can see that defender in front of you. Yeah. You can do everything that you need to do visualizing them as you would if they were actually there. And that will actually, and they've, sh they've proven it in research, that if you do that, when you get into a game, you're, you have already worked on preparing yourself for that situation. Right. And it's just like you had people there working with you. So vis visualization is a huge part of especially game, you know, that second pillar, game speed, game right. intensity. Um, and even just lying in bed thinking about that stuff, yeah. that helps too. And they've proven that in papers as well. Video on, on uh, visualization and... We have an ancient video from, <laughs> you know, like 2008 or 9 uh -huh. that you guys can watch on visualization. Yeah. But yes, it really does, it really does work. Um, yeah. So practicing by yourself. And just like passing, you can... Mark a spot on the wall with a with some tape, some painter's tape. Hit that thing about 500 times yeah. using proper mechanics, and that will be very beneficial. Sure. Um, okay, let's move on. We gotta we gotta get through some of these a little bit quicker, I think. Okay. Uh, Juan Perez says, "I'm five eight. How can I work on my jumping? I want to dunk one day. Please answer." Okay. Well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta grow because you're not gonna be dunking the ball most likely at five foot eight. Well, I mean, uh, we, yeah, we, yeah. okay, stop. Well, we Typically. don't We don't wanna tell people any of that stuff. Oh, we, okay. Uh, you right. know, the thing is, is Reality that- Reality doesn't count. It does. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, we're not gonna say that you can't, but that's that five eight, that's on the lower end of, really of lower, yeah. what is gonna be capable. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, but here's the thing. Dunking is not the be all end all mm -hmm. of, of basketball it's great and it's cool if you can do it i would take the person that can hit 10 threes in a game over somebody that gets one dunk in a game absolutely so uh you know that's great if you want that to be the, the case but i would say there are aspects of basketball that will give you so much more glory than yeah. dunking the basketball yeah. uh you know look at somebody like stephen curry Sure, he can dunk. He might get one every few games or maybe even more. Uh, but, you know, the fact that he can put the ball in the basket from long range, get that extra point, uh, I mean, that, that's so much more, uh, you know, essential to his game than, than dunking a basketball. Right. And, you know, here, here's the other thing. We don't want to discourage anybody. If that's your goal, work towards it. If you don't reach it, whatever. You know, you put the work in. Um, so go check out our vertical jump training videos. We have several on, on YouTube. Um, a lot of that stuff can really help you. If you want to get, uh, you know, really serious about it, you can go to our shotscience.com all access membership there because we have a shooting section right now and we have a vertical jump training section right now. And we're going to add more to that down the road, but the vertical jump training thing might be what you need. And, you know, we have, we talked about the, the jump box earlier which is the vertical jump training kit that we have on, on the website too, that will help you as well. Yeah. Um, so those are the things that we would suggest. And, you know, all of that stuff that, that has worked out really great for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, go check it out. Um, let's see here. Rude Boy Rojo says, I need help in lasting physically during a game. Please help. Sounds like conditioning. Well, it's all about conditioning. And, and if you're playing on an organized team, usually the coaches will have you uh, running lines, um, doing sprints, doing this particular kind of thing, sometimes half court, full court, just to take and build up your, um, 
uh, the word I was searching for. Um, Just your conditioning. Your conditioning so that you can play and play for a period of time when you're in the game. One thing you have to remember, though, is this, is that you may not be in very good sh uh, shape, but the game is a stop-and-go game most of the time. Yeah. And so there are places where you can rest and kind of catch your breath. But when it's time to go, you got to go even if you think you can't go, and then somebody gets fouled or there's a ball out of bounds, and so the game kind of stops and hesitates for a little bit while you catch your breath. So uh, get in better condition, and uh, don't let that keep you from playing as hard as you can play. Yeah, and when you are talking about training and for your conditioning, we suggest that you don't do endurance training yeah. like you would if you're like a marathon runner or you jog for 10 miles or whatever. Yeah. That is the wrong approach to conditioning for basketball. It is. The, 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 the approach that you should... I'm here in the shadows here. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that you should be doing for your training for conditioning in basketball is... It, it goes back the to short sprints. Yeah. yeah, it goes back to the functional approach that you're talking about, right. and that is that you know in basketball you're running up the court, you're running back, you're stopping for free throws, you're stopping for an out of bounds. So it's very stop and go, but it is very kind of uh, you know high paced when you are going. Yeah. So train that way, yeah. um, and that's that's something that they call interval training. And basically, what you're doing is you're doing this period of high intensity followed up by a period of, of lower intensity. Right. So, you know, that's going to be a sprint to a walk or a stop, sprint, walk, or stop. And, you know, one of the simple kind of examples of this that we can talk about is that if you are on a track at your school and you are running around the track, the wrong approach to basketball conditioning would be just to jog the whole thing and just right. keep jogging that guy. The right approach would be this. Sprint the straights, jog or walk the, the curves. And so if you do that, you're gonna be sprinting about 100 yards, walking about 50 yards, or is that another 100 yards or is it 50? It is another 100. So then you'll, you'll walk 100, sprint 100, walk 100, and that really kind of mirrors what you would see in basketball. And that's why you know things like doing running suicides or ladders are more kind of ap applicable to basketball conditioning than you know just running laps around the gym. Right. Right. Yep. 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 Absolutely. So interval training is really good. Also, jump rope training is good. Yeah. Um, jump rope and also uh, the ladder. Yeah. Uh, the, the ladder you put on the ground. That's that's really good stuff too. Yeah. So uh, that's really what we would suggest. The other thing is this too is that you can set your practice up so that you incorporate conditioning into it. So instead of uh, you know just working on your skill development and then at the end maybe you do your conditioning, what you can do is you can break it up. So you'll work on your shooting, maybe you do the form shooting drill, then you run some ladders or you, run, you do one of those interval trainings around the track, then you come back, maybe you work on your ball handling, now you go, you work on some another ladder, uh, you go, come back, uh, work on your passing, go work on your, your jump rope. I mean, there's so many ways to approach that kind of right. stuff. Ooh, man, we're just getting that's, blasted that's, here. Yeah, huh? that's really bright today. Um, sorry, you guys. Um, okay, so let's, let's move on. Uh, let's see. Zorik says, cool, I'll definitely check out your website. Awesome. All right, all right. Suko says, about to cop me a shirt. All awesome. Right. Uh, okay, let's see. Jordan is asking, how can I be relaxed when I play? How can I do what? How can I be relaxed? Oh, oh okay. When, hmm. when we're talking about being relaxed, that means that you have confidence in your, your execution of the skills. Um, and the way that you get confidence in the execution of your skills is you have to work on developing your skills because if you don't develop your skills, you can't have confidence in their execution. And I know that sounds like circular talk, but it's not. Yeah. Um, if you spend enough time working on your skills yourself, doing it through the three pillars of practice, you will have no problem being relaxed when you get out there and start trying to execute them when it counts. Well, you know, there is a period for most players at the beginning of the game where they're a little bit antsy, a little tense, a little tight because uh, they, know how, they don't know how the game is going to go for them. But usually that passes after about four minutes or so, and you get into the flow of the game. Now your focus is not on uh, being uptight, but it's more on the work that you've got to do as a player. So uh, that usually passes in the first three or four minutes. Yeah, and it, maybe there's something else going on. We don't know exactly what's going on with you uh, inside. I mean, are you worried about screwing up? Are you worried about the way your coach is thinking about you? I mean, there's so many things that could be going on, but... I think some of some of it is really just letting go of all that stuff, yeah. but having your skills uh, kind of 
dialed in so that you know that they're going to be there is really a big key of that stuff. Yeah, just the confidence really helps you to relax a little bit too. Yeah. See, Juan Perez is here saying, by the way, I can reach reach up half the net. That's awesome. Right. That's a great start, buddy. All right. That's great. Um, let's see. Let's go down to the bottom. Oh, hold on. I just saw something up here. Where did it go? Uh, okay. Let's go down here to the bottom here. Um, God, so many questions, you guys. We're going to try to get through as many of these as we can. This is from Justin Froiland, who says, I'm playing two years and already in Division I under-19 team in Germany. How can I get attention from U.S. colleges? Oh, well, you know, one of the things, we actually have a, a video, I believe, on that where they kind of talk about how foreign uh, players can uh, get in contact with local colleges. and that's, well, well, we've done a lot of live shows about that topic. That, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, we've talked about it on a live show, but we also uh, talked to uh, uh, college coaches that's what, about That's that what I was going to say, is if you guys want to see more information on that in particular, uh, we'll talk about it just briefly here, but... Yeah. What you should do is go look at our some of our older live shows where we're talking with some uh, college coaches right. and and people that help kids get into college. Um, you know, uh, those would be the ones that we would say go check out. Right. Uh, I, I could tell you a bunch of names right now, but it's really better if you just go back and look at them. Um, and we talk about the internet. I think wait, who were, who were some? Was it Aaron Wilitzko was um, one? Well, I think Aaron and Eric um, uh, Bridgeland from Whitman. Yeah. Uh, and Maybe here, Bobby Bramlett, too. And, and Bramlett, too, and also uh, the coach at UCSC. Now, one of the things that, that comes to my mind that I think is really an important thing to do is let people know here uh, about you. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, you can make videos of yourself playing. And I'll tell you right now, one of the things that they would all uh, uh, agree on is they don't want to see a, a highlight video of what you've done, maybe sparsely in a number of games. What they want to do is maybe see... 10 or 15 minutes of maybe highlights, and then they want to see maybe a whole half uh, that isn't cut up showing you looking great. And so uh, take those things and send them to colleges or universities where you think you might like to play. Yeah, I, I mean, I think even 10 to 15 minutes of highlights is too much. I think you could get by with just a couple of minutes. Well, yeah. What coaches really want to see is that they want to continuous see gameplay. How you play in games. And the other thing that I would do is I would take a look at what level you think you might be able to play at. You know, the Division I basketball in this country is the highest level basketball uh, in the U.S. But then there are other levels as well that the quality of play is, is still really good. Division II, Division III, and then they have, um, let's see. NAIA. NAIA, where they have two levels. And then there's another level uh, below that, and I don't remember what that's called. But There's junior college. I mean, And there's junior college. And what has happened in this country in the last, I don't know, maybe – 15 or 20 years is that junior college have become really um, places where guys who can't get into a, a university because of grades go there. They'd be great players, but they have to go to a JC uh, to play because they didn't have their grades up to par to meet the minimum requirements for uh, the university, let's say. So what I would do is do some uh, searching around uh, on the internet and find some colleges maybe that you might think you might fit in. Yeah, and, and here's the other thing too is that don't sign up for these recruiting companies. Yeah, right. Don't spend money doing it. That is the worst thing that you can do. You should be your own best advocate in this situation. So that means putting together this these short videos of you that show your highlights. They show a continuous half of basketball. Pick your best one that you've ever played that is on film and use that. And, it, you know, it, it's one that shows you that or shows that you can play, uh, you know, you can do everything on the court. Mm -hmm. Shoot, pass, uh, play defense, uh, be a teammate, positivity, all of that stuff, and put that in there. And, and also take and offer the information on you as a person. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is yeah. that the third part of that, too, is that you could not only would you want to write some stuff about this, but get in front of the camera and say, uh, hey, coach, so glad you checked out my video. My name is so-and-so. I'm from here. Uh, this is my background. Also, you know, some of my qualities are I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a leader. I have leadership qualities. I, uh, I'm very positive. I love to, I'd love to be able to come and play for you guys. A great student. Yeah. Um, get up there and show your face because that, yeah. you know, one of the things is how do you catch the attention of these coaches? They see thousands of those type of videos and, and, and players pleading to get on the team and all that. How do you stand out? 
Well, your highlights is one. Yep. Your continuous half a play is one. But if they can see you and they see, oh, uh, you know, I can't remember who asked that question, but, uh, you know, uh, Casey, that guy is, uh, you know, he looks like not only is he a great player, he's got a really great attitude. He's positive. He's going to be a great addition to my team. Uh, let's go after that guy. Well, and you can also have some of the coaches maybe that you're playing for now or in the recent past write little notes uh, about you as a player that you think uh, coaches at U.S. Uh, colleges or universities might be interested in or, hearing. Or ask them to uh, get in front of the camera and do a yeah. little, uh, you know, uh, what, what do they call those things? Uh, well, just get in front of the camera and say, yeah. you know, how awesome you are. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then – the real work starts when you start get, identifying kind of these places that you would like to go play. And I would say get a crap load of them, yep. uh, you know, send it to 30 schools and find out who the coaches are, who the assistant coaches are, and email those those people and say very nice, gracious things um, and, you know, open it with, you know, I would very much love it if you would please watch my video uh, um, and, uh, you know, you just don't want to say, you know, watch my video or, or else or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's not what you want to do because most of the time they, you know, most of those coaches probably won't watch it. That's, well, that's the reality. And a lot of them will push them on to their assistant coaches and the assistant coaches will look at them. And if they think there's some uh, uh, potential there, then they will notify the coach and then maybe there'll be communication. But Expe if you don't, if you aren't proactive is what Casey is saying here too, and taking charge of, of uh, letting them know that you exist and that you want to be in the United States, then it probably is not going to happen. Okay, because you probably don't have anybody in wherever you are located in the world, and I can't remember where it Justin is Je from. Justin is from European. some European country. Uh, and, and and the other thing I think really makes some sense too is to understand that there are an awful lot of college players from all over the world. Australia uh, sends lots and lots of players to this country, but they've kind of found a way uh, where they can identify uh, uh, with the local colleges. There's some colleges like the uh, St. Mary's University. Uh, they've been bringing uh, 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 Australian players here for maybe 10 or 15 years. Yeah, but you know, here's the other thing is that you need to realize that if you think you've sent it to enough people, you haven't. Double it. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it really is you're trying to get the volume out there. And, wor you know, worst case scenario, nobody gets back to you. Yeah. Best case scenario, you have multiple people that are trying to get you to come out and exactly. and play for them yeah. and send them to different levels too. Yep. If you're a division one player, that's great. But all, all the people that are division level quality players don't get to play division one basketball. Exactly right. So you might end up at one of the lower levels and maybe work your way up, or you might find that that level works for you. So yeah, send it to different division, levels. Division two and division three basketball and NAIA as well are really very good basketball. Okay. Very good basketball. Okay, let's okay. Uh, lightning round some of this because we are uh, we're getting we're tons of questions here. Um, and remember, you guys, our question of the day is, where are you guys from? Keep sending that to us because we yeah. want to know. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I mean, I say that all the time, but uh, okay. Um, and it's School Bus Cube was asking something similar because they're from Aruba, I guess. Um, yeah, and there is international scouts. Don't rely on international scouts to come find you. Don't rely on going to tournaments. Don't rely on anybody but yourself. Yeah. Right? Let them have your info yourself. Um, Bobby, Bobby Ricky, not to be confused with Ricky Bobby, says, <laughs> I'm 14. Is it too late to start playing? No. No, no not at all. Not at how, all. How old are some of the people that you, you tutor and, and coach? Uh, well, I, I've coached uh, uh, men that were in their 40s. Um, and a lot of guys that were maybe not quite that old, maybe they're in the late 20s. Uh, and they're, they like basketball, but never spent enough time when they were younger. And so they come to me and, and we teach them how to play and how to shoot particularly. Yeah, I mean, people that say, uh, you know, am I too old or I'm too old, that's just an excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Just get, get down to work. Uh, Car World Insta says, should I stay low to the ground when dribbling between legs and moving the ball? You should, you should be low to the ground. Yeah, you um, should be. And your dribble should be too. Um, one, one of the things that happens when you stand up straight is that your center of gravity goes up higher. Yeah. And then that makes you less stable. Yeah. And then if you try to go anywhere, you have to lower that down and then go. 
So it's better to stay lower to the ground. Exactly. You can get more done and, and you also keep the ball from having to travel up to your hand so much higher. And that's, that's a lot of space where things can go wrong. Well, and people can reach in and tip it away and uh, uh, there you go. Um, okay, Jaden Jones says, woohoo. <laughs> I don't know what about. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just lost it. Hold on, where'd it go? Uh, Lanky Boy one two three four five says, "Hey guys, I'm a six foot eight inch center in England. I'm looking to improve my ball control and shooting. What is the best way to do this? Uh, drill. Um, your ball control and shooting. Those are two aspects of basketball that are a pretty big deal. Three pillars of practice. Um, you know, I think that the, that's really the best approach when it comes to shooting. Obviously, in pillar one, it's going to be the form shooting drill." Um, and if you want to start stepping it up, we have a few drills on our channel here on YouTube that you can use, but you can also go to our, you know, I'll say it again, our shot science, all access membership. We have a bunch of drills there where we are stepping it up from the form shooting drill and a free throw drill, which are kind of the very controlled dialed in stuff to drills that are, uh, progressing more advanced so that you are going from, uh, you know, non-dynamic to dynamic movement and you're adding in defense or game speed game intensity so i would suggest go check that out and we we'd show you kind of all the drills there in that membership yeah you know um, this let me throw something in here casey one of the things that happens with with um not only young people but probably people who are older players too who want to develop their game and not sure how to do that and sometimes they go to the wrong people one of the things I think is so important when it comes to ball skills and shooting skills is this. You have to get it right. Um, and a lot of the things that are done in dribbling and whatnot are, are not good. And they expose you and uh, set you up for turnovers. Same thing is true in shooting. So make sure that you're getting the right information and then get into the right uh, um, practice situation where you're practicing on making this all better. Because... If you were just kind of getting started on, on ball control and whatnot when you're dribbling, you'd be surprised how much progress you can make in a week just spending 15 minutes a day on it. Yep. Um, and, you know, we have all the ball control stuff on here on our YouTube channel as well. And, uh, you know, we have drills there. Uh, I think that, that if you go see uh, how to develop your weak hand, that video, I think that that has a bunch of uh, yeah. uh, ball handling drills attached to it. Right. But typically when we do these videos here, we put a bunch of playlists in the description of the video underneath right. here. And in there you can find the ball handling playlist or the shooting playlist. So I would say check those out. If you're really serious about getting better, I would go check out our all access membership on our shot science channel on shot science, shot science .com. Okay. Um, okay. So this one is from Michael Tim Zinko who says, I have a game tomorrow. Do you have any tips for light time preparation? I don't know what that is, but, um, if you have a game tomorrow, you can't really prepare within 24 hours for yeah. a game. It has to be done earlier than that. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be useful. You should be consistently working on your game every mm -hmm. single day. Uh, oh, she says for late time preparation. Uh, so you should be working on your game every day consistently, no matter what. And that's going to prepare you for consistent execution when right. you get out and play, play in games. But there are some things that you can do mentally that you can flip instantaneously yeah. and those will definitely make a big deal and that that you know a lot of those can be seen in our video on how to make the team right and we talk about uh things like effort and initiative and leadership um and hustle and all those things if you go and do that stuff i mean that's really just a mental switch i can yeah. hustle uh, just by flipping that switch i can't make my shooting jump 25 percentage points just by flipping a switch uh, you know, so the skill part of that stuff is kind of, it's something that is kind of the, the longer scale preparation. Right. This stuff is uh, a little bit more of a mental flip that you, right. or switch that you flip. So hopefully that helps you. Go check out how to make the team. Um, let's see here. Some of these are repeaters. Let's see. Justin Froland says, thank you very much. No problem, well, Justin. We could help you, Justin. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. All right. Chancellor Williams is here from Las Vegas. All right, cool. Uh, Sam Huang says, what should we do if weather is bad? Okay, this is, this is something that we get all the time. Yeah. 
and it's people that uh, you know there, there's some situation that makes training or working on their game a little bit difficult. And our best advice to you guys is this: FIO, <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. I mean, we can't do it for you. We don't know if it's snow. We don't know if it's rain. We don't know if it's a gale or or, or whatever. And so you have to take and figure out. Okay, it's it's raining like cats and dogs now. Where do I go? And and if you put your mind on it, you say, oh yeah, there's that gym over on 24th Avenue. I'll slide over there and see if I can get in there. So you have to figure it out. Yeah, it's figure it out or make it happen. Yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of that is is that we can all come up with you know excuses for why we can't do something. Um, and you know, this is this is us giving you the straight talk. We could we could say, well, you know, if you can't do that, then you that's not the way that that it should go. This is. This is one of those things where you have to be creative, you have to be a self-starter, and you have to figure it out. FIO. Um, yep. And so, you know, a lot of times, you know, you see these guys that play at the higher levels of basketball. Um, you know, there's some guys that come from the inner city. There's, you know, a lot of those guys don't have any money. Uh, they don't have a, a gym that they can go to, but they've figured out and they find a local playground or they find a gym that they can go and they talk to a coach and they say, hey, coach, is there any way that we could uh, get in here or maybe start an open gym or go to a YMCA or something like that? Um, and then there's guys and girls that are from places like Alaska or Minnesota or wherever, and they are getting in and they're training in places where they don't see sunlight for, you know, sure. <laughs> a few days. Yeah, and garages work really good. Yeah. You could do a lot of other things in that garage. Yeah, get your set up your garage, maybe talk to your parents. Um, maybe it's something where you have to buy a gym membership at some place yeah. um, or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do to figure it out. If it's raining outside and you're, the court that you work on is the one in your driveway, uh, you know, okay, you can't use call, that one. Call people and find out who knows what's, what's up. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people as well. Yeah, we can get in that one because I get in there last week. Nobody's going to hold your hand. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, all those guys that had to figure it out and girls that had to figure it out to get to the next levels of basketball, they did it themselves and they figured it out. Um, right. Let's see here. And, you know, that's that's us being straight talk. That's yeah. not us being jerks about it. Yeah. We just want you to get better. So that's really the, the bottom line there. Yeah. Um, Donnie Chill says shooting drills for sixth graders. Same was they are for the eighth graders and tenth graders and twelfth graders and college freshmen, et cetera, et cetera. They're the same, and you will adapt those to fit you if it happens to be you that's a sixth grader. If you're an adult with sixth grade students or, or uh, players, then you, it's the same mechanics, same mechanics, uh, mechanics in all of it. Yep. And uh, so that's what you should focus on. Andrew Young says, "All right, guys, I'm out of here, or I'm out." Got to head back to Bowling Green. Thanks for the tips and Merry Christmas. You bet. Same right to you, back Andrew. at you. All Make right. sure you check out our new website. Um, let's see here. James Adcock is saying, how do I keep my head still when I shoot? Well, you know, um, here's, here's what you have to consider. And we talked about this earlier when somebody said, they, how do you get your arm straight when you shoot? Well, you focus on doing that. And so any of that element that you have that is – you don't feel is right, then you have to focus on if your head is wobbling all over the place, you've got to focus on that so it's not doing that. Uh, and it's just that simple. It sounds like it's just too simple to uh, even think about. But the thing is, is that if you let it go on, then it begins to cause your shot maybe to um, get poor or get worse. And yeah. so I focus on all of those elements. I mean, it comes back to the old joke where the guy goes into the doctor's office and he said, and the guy says, it hurts. Hey doctor, it hurts when I do this with my arm. And the doctor says, well, don't do that. You know, I it's, mean, it's, it's exactly that. It's kind of that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when it comes down to making sure you don't do that in the heat of the moment, then you have to work on the muscle memory of that. And so don't do that while you're doing all of this in, in, in uh, pillar one, working on your form. And again, film yourself, look at yourself doing it. What are you doing? Then stop doing it in your practice. Okay. Well, you can, you can read it too here. I know, but I can't read it. It's too far uh, away. <laughs> uh, foodie or fuddy AF says, I didn't make the team this year because the coach automatically picked up people from last year and I did really good, but he still cut me any advice for next year. Okay. There's a ton of advice. Oh for yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I could give you a litany of stories of players that I have come across uh, that I have uh, coached at one point along the line who did the same thing or had the same thing happen to them. And what they did 
after some uh, consultation is they worked on their game and they got better and better and better. And what happens is now you've got uh, this year between this season and next season where you can really make a leap in your skills and abilities if you're willing to do that. Uh, and then one of these guys, uh, I can remember in junior high school, he didn't make the sixth grade team. He didn't make the seventh grade team. He made the eighth grade team, but he never got a chance to play hardly at all. He came to, to, uh, to our high school uh, and um, they, they took him on the freshman team. And, you know, he started to get kind of good. And he came to us and we worked with him on his shooting and ball skills and whatnot. And then and as a, a sophomore, he's up on the JVs and he was a starter as a sophomore. In the uh, junior year, he went to the varsity, and he played quite a bit. His senior year, he makes all league. Okay, and why did he do that? Because he put in the effort to work on his skills and get better. And that, that is the answer to your question, is you have to work on your skills to get better so that those people who are selecting the teams cannot cut you because you're better than everybody else, and he knows it. And here's the other thing, too. Spend the time in the offseason to campaign for your spot on the team. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the way that you do that is that you talk to the coach right now, yeah. and you say, hey, coach, what is what can I do to, to maybe uh, improve my game and get maybe make the team next year? Say, is there any open gyms that I can maybe attend? Uh, show up at those if they are scheduled already. Um, Ask him if, if you can maybe get into the gym and work on your game. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Show them that you want to be there. Right. Make sure that they don't know you just because you're the guy that shows up at tryouts. Yeah. That is the worst thing you can do because I can guarantee you that almost every coach, high school coach or junior high coach, they basically know who they're going to have on their team they, they before do. tryouts. They do. I mean, that's the, you know, the sad little story that you might not want to hear, but – the team is pretty much already decided. Well, yeah, and it's unfortunate that happens. Um, so you have to break that mold by being better than they ever thought you could be. And that's the way it was with this young man. I've had experience with half a dozen guys like that who just all of a sudden, uh, they just jump into it with both feet and uh, they get better, better, better. Right, okay. Um, let's see here. So Sam Wang is saying something about uh, they heard that you should look at the flight of the ball when you shoot, or you heard that from some other trainer. We do not agree with that. That is the worst advice you can get when it comes to shooting. That is like if you are shooting a gun and you are trying to, to look at the either the, the, the muzzle of the gun or look at the, the bullet itself, and you aren't locking in on your target. That makes no sense. You are trying to hit a target. You have to visualize that target, and you want to not take your eyes off of it. And if you're worried about how you're releasing the ball and that's why you're looking at your hands, then you haven't done the work to make sure that your mechanics are in the place that they should be. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Well, how about this? If I'm throwing darts, uh, I'm you know, in the rec room and I'm, we're playing yeah. darts, and I throw the dart and I watch the dart go to the board. And that, that's not how you play that. You focus on that, uh, the center of it, and that's where you're trying to put the dart. Same thing is true when you're shooting the basketball. You, you want to put your eyes on the target where you want the ball to land. And, and it's not like some you can make the ball, if you're watching the ball in flight, that you can make it go right or you can make it go left. That's not, none of that really works. So we don't buy into that. We think that if you're going to take and, and shoot a basketball effectively, you've got to focus on the target that you're trying to hit and get the ball to get there for I, you. I mean, that's what it's all about. When it comes down to accurately hitting targets, that's what it's all about. And, you know, sometimes people will, will hold up these these still motion pictures where they'll say, oh, well, if you look at this, uh, you know, Michael Jordan's eyes aren't on the basket. He's looking up at his hand or Steph Curry's. In those situations, a lot of times they are trying to get shots off with people in their face and they're trying to see if the ball has been blocked uh, or if it is going to get over their hand or whatnot, or maybe it's even a split second look at it. But in general, most people do not look at the basketball. And if they are, it's not the best way to hit a target. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just, you know, the, yeah. the dart thing is a better example than the gun thing. But, um, you know, it's, it just makes so much more sense to do that. Um, okay, so I want to remind you guys that if you want to join Team Shot Science, our shirts are for sale in our at shotscience.com. And today only, this is the last day of our Black Friday sale, they are 20% off. So if you guys go and get your shirt today, 
you will save some bucks. All right. And All right. we would love to see you guys wearing the shirts. And then get us a picture of you in that Picture shirt. or video. Yeah. Show us your training in the video. And we, are, we will be featuring people a ton that are wearing our shirts and putting it on our Facebook page, which has 1.6 million people there. Uh, and, on, and on Instagram, which has over 60,000 people there and, and everywhere else. So uh, make sure you get a shirt today because today is the day to get a, uh, a bargain. Uh, yeah. yeah we, uh, we can't keep it this low anymore after today because yeah. we're, we want to make sure that we uh, let you guys in on that. Um, okay. So that's going to do it for our questions today. But before you guys bail, we want to ask you some questions. Number one is this. Where are you guys in, in, in the world? Where are you guys? Yeah. Um, you know, like we said earlier, we're here in Santa Cruz, California. We want to know where you guys are, whether that's Amsterdam or Japan or Germany or wherever. Tell us where you are. Second question that we want you guys to tell us is, what is a skill that you're great at? Yeah. What is that? And then a skill. In basketball, of course. Yeah. In, and then a second skill that you're not so great at. And what are you going to do to work on it? Right? Yep. Sounds good. Uh, there's a Toronto there and, a, and the Ukraine. All yep. right. And our last bit of, of homework is for you guys to go just check out shotscience.com. It would make us super happy if you would just go check it out. Right. And uh, we want to thank you guys so much for being here. We got Natish from Toronto, Young Money from the Ukraine, Sam Huang is from Canada, Vancouver. Uh, Basketball Highlights is here from Auburn, Washington. Tyler Ralph is from New Zealand. He's a Kiwi. Um, cool. And Ali. Mohazeb is from Cal uh, from California, and then we have somebody here from Korea. Awesome! Thank you guys so much all for right. watching. Make Thanks, sure you guys. follow us on all of our social media stuff. Check out shotscience.com, and we will see you next time, 1 p.m. Pacific time. All right. Get a shot science shirt. <laughs>